Setting up Google Ads conversion tracking can feel intense. You have Google Tag Manager and you have the manual code, but I'm gonna show you in this video that it's not that complicated. I'm gonna walk you through inside the Google Ads platform on my screen and show you exactly how to set it up. All right, so now we're inside Google Ads and what you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate over to the conversions setting or conversions page. There's two ways to do this. You can either search for the word conversions inside the search bar. I love the search bar, by the way, or you click on tools and settings, go down to measurement and then click on conversions here. So go ahead and click that now. Since I'm already on this page, nothing happened, of course, but what you're gonna do is when you're on this page, go ahead and click on the blue plus here and create a new conversion. So we're gonna click on that. And then it gives us four options here. So Typically, how you proceed is going to be based on what kind of conversion you're tracking. So most people click on the website column, which is going to track any actions taken on your website. So if someone booked a call and they landed on the thank you page, you'd want to track the information and say, that's a conversion. Send that back to Google Ads. If someone took a certain action on your app, you can track that too. Phone calls as well, pretty self-explanatory. And the import option is pretty interesting. And a lot of our B2B clients typically use this because they have like a CRM like Salesforce or something where they have a lead become qualified, for example. So maybe they converted first, but at a a later time maybe it's a month later two months later whatever it is they become like qualified lead we can then import that specific conversion directly back into site google ads so we can see which campaigns ad groups and keywords drove those qualified leads so we can optimize for more of those qualified leads so you can import that data from analytics or um, offline data or salesforce that's what people use that for but for this most part most of you are going to click on the website conversion action so go ahead and click on that and this part's pretty easy. So we're going to click the category. In this case, I want to track people who booked a call with. So we're going to go ahead and find a category that is similar to that. So let's go ahead and book appointment. That's fine with me. So we're going to call this booked call. So what's the value of this conversion? So in this case, I'm probably willing to pay, I'm just throwing a number out there, let's say like $150 for a booked call. And that's what I'm going to tell Google to optimize for later if I'm doing like target CPA or something like that. But typically, if you don't have a value, you can just leave it as like one or leave it blank or don't use um, a value for this conversion action. I always say put a value if you can put a number on that. So the count is pretty straightforward. How many times do you want to count this conversion? Now, if you are counting booked calls or some kind of B2B or a webinar opt in or whatever it is, you typically only want to count the first time that someone converts. Otherwise, you're going to have a repeat rate. And if you're counting every for something that's like a lead opt in or a booked call, um, it's just going to kind of throw off your numbers a little bit. It doesn't make sense to count every. It's going to give you inflated numbers. But if you have like an e-commerce store and one person can make multiple purchases, it would make more sense to count every because every purchase is valuable. But if in this case, I'm just tracking book calls, leads. If someone books called me twice, I don't want to count that as two conversions. I want unique conversions. So then you have your click through conversion window. Typically, just leave that as 30 days and then view through as one day. That's fine, too, as well. Um, and just to explain that really quick, it's just the maximum time after someone views the ad that you want to count that as a view through conversion. So if they viewed the ad and then somehow converted on your website without clicking the ad within 24 hours, it would count that as a conversion. So if they saw it in the search um, and this one click through, if they click the ad and then converted within 30 days, it would count that as a conversion. So most of your search traffic conversions are going to be click through conversions. So let's move on. Including conversions, yes, because then we can see it inside Google Ads in the conversion column. And the attribution model, this will vary depending on what your taste is in terms of what you're trying to show your data as. So what I like to do is actually set it as last click. Um, sometimes we set it as different attribution models depending on the type of client, type of product, type of service they're offering. All this really means is trying to determine how much credit each click gets in the conversion or the sales funnel stage of things. And if you don't know what a sales funnel is, check out another video I did on that where I have like graphics on screen and stuff like that. I talked about Google Ads as well. Link will be in the description. All this is trying to say is which keyword or click gets the credit. In this case, just I'm going to track last click. What was the last keyword they searched for and they clicked on my ad and then converted. So I'm going to click create and continue. So here's the part that trips people up a lot. You have your tag set up and typically you're going to do one of two things. You're going to install a tag yourself by adding the tag to your website code, or you're going to use a platform like Google Tag Manager to set this up. Or of course you can email it to your developer, but basically I'm going to show you both ways right now. So to install the tag yourself, you have to just paste in an HTML snippet 
on your website. So depending if you're using WordPress or if you're using raw HTML or whatever you've built it on, um, it is gonna get a bit technical here because you need to make sure you have the global site tag already installed in your page. And you can go ahead and get this snippet here. And then you're gonna go in and add the event snippet. So when do you want this event to fire? So for example, you could download a WordPress plugin, install your global site tag, and then say exactly which page do you want this conversion event to fire. So whatever that specific thank you page is just for my book calls, I want the tag to fire and that will send a count back to Google and it'll tell me exactly where this person converted, which keyword they converted on, when did they convert, all the other information that Google has so that way I can optimize my campaigns around that. So this is just like a unique code you wanna put on the specific page where you want them to convert. Or if you have Shopify, there's an easy integration to do this as well. But I'm gonna talk about the easier option in my opinion, which is Google Tag Manager. So Google Tag Manager requires you just to install Google Tag Manager, which is pretty easy. I'm gonna show you how to do it really quick. But all you have to do in this case is you can select with inside Google Tag Manager where you want the code to fire. So you don't have to manually go into your website and go edit the code of that specific thank you page and then put in the conversion code manually manually in like the head section. You don't have to do any of that. You can just use Google Tag Manager to do that for you and manage all your tags. So let's leave this screen open and go over to Tag Manager. All right, so now we're in Google Tag Manager and basically what this is, it's a place to manage all of your conversion codes, your Facebook pixels, any kind of tracking tags. If you're using third-party tools and they ask you to paste a tag in your head of your website, all that can be managed here. You can pause and play them. You can deploy new tags. It, it's a really great way for marketers to almost act like developers because all you have to do is basically install the Google tag code on the website. And then if you're not technical and you just want to modify things from inside the platform, you can do so in here. So let's set up that conversion code we just saw. First things first, if you don't have Google Tag Manager already installed on your website, and if you do, you can skip ahead a little bit, go ahead and click on admin and then click on install Google Tag Manager here. Now it's pretty similar as the other page we're seeing in Google ads where it says paste in this code. But the key difference is you just have to paste in one code and then now you can manage all of your codes inside of Google Tag Manager. So you don't have to involve your developer every time you wanna change something with a tracking code on your website. So all you need to do is install the code it tells you to do here in the head of your website. And if you don't know what that is, I would loop in your developer or someone who knows how to paste in codes here. And then additionally, you can also paste this code, well, you have to, in the body tag. So the body tag of uh, all the pages. And this will allow Google to inject tags and scan for malware. So if you, if you add any tags in here that have any HTML code, um, it'll automatically be scanned for malware. So if it, it finds any malware, it'll pause the tag before you can go into your site. So it's a great way to make things more secure. And then once you've done that, go back into your tag manager here, click on the preview button here to ensure that it's set up correctly. And then type in your website where you just installed those codes to make sure it is done properly. So I'm gonna click on the start button and all right now it's connected and i can see that tag manager has been successfully uh set up here and the really cool thing about this one is now when you're navigating through your site you can see which tags are firing in real time so it's no longer guessing and it makes debugging way easier so if you had a tag that you wanted to fire whenever you click on a certain button you can actually look now inside of here to see which tags were fired and you can see which ones were not fired so you can see a list of all the tags you have and which ones did fire off. It's a really easy way for non-developers to debug and install tags on your site. And you can see now when I'm on our site, I can actually see this little window here that says debugger connected to let me know that if I go through the site and I start clicking on things, I'll start to see what tags are firing and which tags are not firing. So it's really great. But enough of how to set up Google Tag Manager. Now I wanna talk about installing a tag and tracking a Google Ads conversion. So just click on tags over here in the left-hand column. And this is a list of all your tags. So you'll have your Facebook pixel here. You have a LinkedIn ads conversion tracking tag. You'll have any kind of um, heat mapping or user mouse recording software. You'll have all this stuff saved here. And most importantly, we'll have our Google ads conversion tracking. So go ahead and then click on the new button up here in the top right corner. And this is one of the main features here. It's actually setting up and creating your tags. So if this is for Google ads, which it is for this video, the first thing you need to do is set up something called a conversion linker. It's required by Google ads to really make sure that all the data is being passed through. 
um, you can actually see here in the instructions, it says, make sure you add a conversion linker tag and configure it on all your pages. That just helps basically the information pass through from Google ads uh, from your website back to Google ads. So make sure to do that. I just like to name this conversion linker. You click on the tag configuration, which is what is the tag? Is this, is this some custom HTML code? And they have a lot of pre-built stuff in here for you. So if you want to add custom HTML, you can do that here. In this case, they have a pre-built conversion linker widget. So we just click on that one. Um, I usually click enable linking on all page URLs. And if I had multiple domains, I can say enable linking across domains. And you could set the tag priority. And here's where people probably get confused. There's a lot of like additional settings that look intimidating. A lot of things we don't really know, but good news is we can just minimize that for now. Go ahead and click on triggering. This is gonna say, when do you want this to fire? So in this case, I want it to fire on all pages. So we're gonna click on the all pages container. All right. And now you can even add an exception if you wanted to, like maybe there's a specific page you didn't want to trigger on, but go ahead and click save on that. So since I already have this one, I can't save it. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it, but you do need this install in yours. Great, now we can finally install the Google Ads conversion code. And the good news is in the future now, anytime you wanna install Google Ads conversion codes, you don't need to do the conversion linker thing every time. You'll just need to copy the conversion code ID and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and title this tag, new booked call. I'm gonna pick my tag configuration. And I'm gonna go down to Google Ads conversion tracking. And then it's gonna ask me for the conversion ID, conversion label, value, transaction ID, and so on. So I'm gonna go back over to Google Ads, copy that conversion ID that they gave us earlier, paste it in there on the conversion ID, then go back to Google Ads and copy the conversion label. And that's pretty much the hard part. When it comes to other settings, again, you don't need to worry about this so much because we already have conversion linking already installed. And if you have any advanced settings, like you wanna fire this one after, you get really custom with how you want these tags to fire. That's why this tool is so powerful. For now, we're just gonna leave these alone and just not touch them. Just forget they exist. <laughs> now, triggering is pretty self-explanatory. When and how do you want this tag to fire? So click on that to set that up. Now, in this case, you usually probably have some sort of thank you page, checkout page, or what have you. So you're gonna go ahead and click on the plus button up here. You're not gonna wanna have it trigger on all pages because it's gonna get a ton of conversions every time you get a new visitor. So I'm gonna say uh, booked call thank you page. So when someone hits the booked call thank you page after they booked a call, I want that to count as a conversion and then send that data back to Google Ads so I can see how they converted, which keyword did they come from? So then you have your trigger type here. And this is where, again, it gets really custom. Don't get overwhelmed. It's, it's pretty straightforward. For the most part, you're gonna select page view. But there's some pretty cool other features really quick that I'll talk about. Basically, if you have a form and when you submit it, it has like a pop-up modal. It doesn't redirect you to a specific page. You can actually say, whenever this form is submitted, then trigger this. Or what I've done in the past is done it based on element visibility. So if the thank you page ID or the thank you pop-up had a specific ID, I could put it in there. You can do it based on certain text being shown. You can do it if the user scrolls down to a part of the page. If someone starts a video, you can get really crazy with this. And it's really cool. And you don't need a developer. That's the coolest part. In this case, we're just going to select page view. So I don't want it to fire on all pages. I want it to just fire on the URL that is the thank you page for after you book a call. So the easiest way to do this is go visit your booked call thank you page. Go through your own funnel, book your call, and figure out what the URL is in the address bar. For this example, the URL contains something like new booked call thanks. And if the URL above contains this part in the address bar, count that as Google Ads conversion by firing the tag. So I'm gonna click save on that. And that's pretty much it. Now you can save this tag and now you're tracking your Google Ads conversions. And in the future, it's gonna be so much easier to add new tags because you set up Google Tag Manager. So two birds, one stone, kudos for that. And just to recap what's happening here, you're basically saying, okay, what is firing? What is the tag that you wanna fire? Oh, it's the Google Ads conversion code that you got from Google that they said to copy and paste this. Okay, so you're setting up a conversion tag, great. And then when do you want it to fire? How do you want to trigger this tag right here to show up and send data back to Google Ads? Well, I only want this code to show up whenever someone visits the booked call thank you page. And I don't want it to show up any other time. And now I can track new booked calls from my paid ads. So we're going to click save on this. And then the next part, super easy, just click submit. You can go in and put notes to as well. So you can keep a history if you broke some codes or some change. I always recommend putting in notes in here. So um, new booked call conversion 
code. There you go. And go ahead and click on publish. And of course, sing like no one is listening. <laughs> and of course, before you click submit, go ahead and you know click next or click submit on the conversion that you set up down here, just so it's saved inside Google Ads. And there you go, it's showing you the version history. You are done, it's done successfully. Your code is now live. Now, how do you check to see if it's actually live? Because I know we like things to work without any hiccups, but sometimes we have hiccups. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. The first thing you're gonna do to debug it is actually visit the URL that you want the code to be firing on that you had set up inside Google Tag Manager. And there's two ways to do it. You can use a tool called Google Tag Assistant. The link will be down below. And all I have to do is just click on this tool. This is a free Chrome extension and it's an easy way to just check if your tags are firing from your browser. And I could see right here that a Google Ads conversion code is firing. And I can click into it to find more details. Um, that's one easy way to do it. But if you wanna do it with the debug mode and get more granular, you can do that inside Google Tag Manager. So let me show you that right now. So go back to Google Tag Manager, click on the preview button up here. Of course, paste in the URL that you just installed the tag on and click on start and it should take you right to that URL. So you're gonna see in the bottom right corner that the debugger is connected. And now all I have to do is go back to this window here and click on continue, and I can see which tags were fired on this page. So if I'm looking right now, I can actually see that the conversion code I had set up is fired. Now in this case, it's, it's not called new booked call. This is a different conversion code that I'm testing right now uh, that's live on a real page. And I can actually see right here that it's being fired. And this is the name I gave it. If I want to make 100% sure, even though it says Google Ads conversion tracking right here, I could just click on that and I can actually line up and see is the conversion ID and the conversion label the same as what Google Ads told me to input. And I know for sure now that this tag is absolutely firing because I can see it happening inside the debugger window and I can see my conversion linker is also firing too as well. So I know my tags are firing and that is how you can set up Google Ads conversion tracking the manual way and how you can set up with my preferred way, which is Google Tag Manager. And I also gave you a little bit of an overview of what Google Tag Manager is. So hope you found this video valuable. If you did, please leave a comment, please subscribe and please like the video. Really appreciate it. My name is Lewis Mudrich. I post a lot of other videos about Google Ads. So check them out on my channel and I'll see you on the next video.